So that's that's what I usually tell my students. Um, when you take up these exams, first thing that you take do is you stop thinking as a dentist who has X number of years of experience. You stop thinking as a specialist in your field because you tend to overthink, and you start looking at the questions from a fourth year dental student's perspective. So a fourth year dental student has some idea about what's there in the textbook. They know. the treatment plan according to the textbooks they know the canadian guidelines of doing stuff so they know how to pick the correct answer so this is what the exam is oriented towards it is basically to see whether you are at or on par with a graduating fourth year dental student so the answers um often are very simple i use ockham's razor the simplest answer is most often the correct answer and that works very well here um to answer your question about the difference in treatment plans yes and this is seen very often in the exams not only from our indian perspectives but for candidates who studied for the inbde or the nbde or the us boards so we might think that us boards are very similar to canadian boards they are in some aspects but there are some critical guidelines that we follow that the us doesn't follow we are kind of very conservative uh when it comes to our line of treatment planning and our line of treatments so for example uh articane 4% articane uh, is used as an inferior alveolar nerve block agent in the US it's mentioned in malamid that you can use it 100% okay one of the big problems that articane does have as an 4% solution is it causes paresthesia prolonged paresthesia of the inferior alveolar nerve so canadian guidelines restrict us from using articane so we might have a question that says which of the following is suitable or which of the following are not suitable for use as an anesthetic agent and an inferior alveolar nerve block it could be lidocaine mepivacaine articane all of the above if you are from the us and you study for the us board you would select all of the above because it's right there for us it would probably be lidocaine because that is the most common one we could use mepivacaine as well which is correct but definitely we wouldn't use articane so all of the above goes out of the uh, question so it's kind of like it's very very specific these questions are very specific to the dental curriculum out here and um, that's the thing uh, canadian grads have that advantage that they know exactly what the dental curriculum is they know exactly what their guidelines are so they do slightly better in these exams and as we come from different countries we just need to keep in mind what is the question being asked why is this question being asked and what is the answer in the canadian perspective not the us perspective in the canadian perspective and my in my opinion to the best way to actually do that is look at canadian studies look at canadian healthcare guidelines and determine the answer. that's what we we have to discuss now because many students do ask and i am going to ask you few questions which are uh, mentioned in the comment section of our last uh, two podcast and i hope that you will answer it one student has asked that which are the books you mentioned that uh, there are few articles canadian studies and the guidelines what is the best way to prepare for this the first and second exams the first one is the fundamental knowledge exams which is completely mcq based and it just has an mcq with a description and four options now the answer for those options are typically sourced from canadian practice guidelines dental curriculum at the schools and also a certain textbooks that have been mentioned as references so if you open up the nded website and if you check out a list called references for the uh, uh, for the uh, afk exam there's a list of about 48 or so books that keeps on getting updated and those books are considered the standard textbooks or the reference notes for um, the canadian exams now one textbook might actually differ from the other karanza if you look at karanza one chapter differs from the other because what's mentioned as right in one chapter might actually be twisted on its head and you know given in another way it's just an holistic way of approaching the same thing from different view points but that doesn't help us because we don't really benefit from that we need one answer we don't really know what the answer is if karanza itself mentions at two different places two different answers so this is the problem 
you have clear cut a list of textbooks you have list of reference guidelines on the ndeb's website but when you try to apply them to you know picking an answer for four out of four options it gets a little difficult and this takes a little getting used to um, so as um, so let me explain i'm not trying to um, boast this but i'm just i'm trying to say that i've been through doing this for the past about 3 years now and we've kind of picked up on uh, the essence of a question you know exactly when we look at a question what's being asked why is it being asked and of the four options it what could be likely it's not because of anything else other than doing the same thing over and over over, over again so it's kind of repetition so what we have done is in our classes we've just concised all of the, those textbooks all of those guidelines into manageable bits and we provide that to our students so one very good source of learning for our students is our class notes that we provide because you can still study from textbooks 100% but if you have to pick one answer and you have to search the textbook in it you have to see how much time you spend there these exams are taken within a 6 month span you might need 6 months to prepare for it is it worthwhile studying from all of those textbooks or reading all of those textbooks to take up the exam or is it worth to have a targeted approach just for the exam so that's that's basically the advantage that you offer our students but just to give you an idea those textbooks that are there on the website the canadian practice guidelines that are mentioned in that list on the website are the reference sources it's just a matter of picking and choosing the answer from small specific parts of those reference sources so apart from the notes given by your coaching institute uh, for example in india also we have the notes given by the coaching institute there are reference books which is given uh, mentioned by the authorities but we also have the dentist uh, uh, book uh, you know something like that and for us exam also we have dental decks we have first aid we have most be review do you have any books like that for the canadian exam unfortunately no there are no books like that for the canadian exams um, there have not been any attempts to make that we're actually uh, working with some publishers to see if we can help with that um, me and my classmates we are trying to come up with a guide for the canadian exams uh, but unfortunately there is a lot of resistance to that because a lot of this material that the ndeb has on its website is copyright so you can't break the copyright so that's the reason why we don't want to fall afoul of any laws and we haven't done anything but there are people who say that they've studied from dental decks and they've studied from mosbys for the exams i like to just offer one bit of caution to them try to see things not from the us perspective but the canadian perspective uh, because mosbys and dental decks is geared towards mbd and inbd some of the options that they mention as correct like i mentioned the uh, case of articane that may not work in the canadian perspective simple things like what is the daily maximum of ibuprofen it is different in the us it's different in canada we have a lower daily maximum of ibuprofen that we can give to a patient so you might end up making small silly mistakes which might cost you um there are unfortunately there are no real books out there that can help you study one concise source for everything like dentist uh there is a market for it but it's a bit difficult to get there um now if you want to study you will have to collate all of these articles you'll have to collate all of those textbooks try to study from there try to study from the release question bank that's the best way to do it uh, if you are not taking any external uh, coaching but if you are taking coaching whichever coaching it is doesn't matter refer the study material that is given to you by the coaching because across uh, the various institutes our study materials is generally on the same level because we achieve almost the same level of results throughout we've seen that so it's kind of a uh, uh, easy way of studying for the exam sir once you appear for the first exam how many do- days does it take to get the results so now in the context of covid it has changed quite a bit earlier we had about 8 weeks to 10 weeks from the date of your exams to your result um because of the exams now being on prometric it can actually be faster it can actually be be earlier uh, but if um, you know situation changes it might actually be delayed so on a general note 8 to 10 weeks from the part time that you have taken your exam until you get your result this changes again and uh, students can take 
uh, this exam on any day for example nbd part 1 or inbd you can take throughout the year depending on which lot you get and uh, you know maybe uh, the result comes after 3 to 2 to 3 weeks is it similar in canadian exams unfortunately uh, no the ndeb exams they are taken twice a year so they usually conduct it at two times one is in august the other in february so it's taken twice a year in six month cycles you just get two dates okay uh, each time you apply so uh, maybe one day before or one day after depending on the time zone so it could be february 2nd and 3rd depending on the time zones that you are uh, taking up the exams in and it could be august 7th or 8th usually it is done on uh the first weeks uh saturday usually it's a saturday that the exams are taken up and uh, will everyone get an opportunity to appear for this exam since it is only it only happens once in six month yes so now therein is the rub um past couple of uh, you know about a year uh, since covid hit the number of applicants that have come in have been really high uh ndb is kind of taken a longer time processing their um, applications but it's understandable from their end and they weren't able to conduct the exams due to the lockdowns as well due to covid so what's happened right now is there is a huge number of students waiting to take up the exams so the moment the exam registration goes online it just gets booked out um usually i i don't i don't know if ndb releases this um statistic but from what i hear it is about 1500 to 1200 students who are allowed to take up the exam in one attempt as in in february i don't really know the numbers because uh, it's not made public or it may be made public in one of ndeb's uh, you know uh, releases but i don't have the hard numbers myself it's my estimate that about 1200 people take up the exams every uh, cycle so it is very competitive you have to be on the applications the moment the application that email comes in that the exam is open now registrations are open you have to have your payment source ready and get the registration done because it is very competitive i have heard uh situations where it gets the registration gets booked out within about 35 minutes of opening it's it sells like hot cakes unfortunately how much time a student has to read now let us think about uh, think like a undergraduate student Uh, how many months he would require to appear you know for preparing this exam with coaching or without coaching it depends uh, primarily on how in tune with your subject you are it depends on how much uh, experience you've had with such similar exams uh, i can give you my example when i took up the exams i actually studied for about 3 months i did take up coaching with dstc and i teach there now but when i took up the coaching i was actually working full time at another place so i studied for about 3 months before i took up the exam uh i have i know people who study for 6 months and take up the exam because that's how the coaching cycles are we basically focus on teaching the maximum amount of uh, the material in that 6 month period so that you are ready to take up the exam our focus is on teaching rather than anything because if you know the concepts you will be able to answer the questions that's what we feel um, when we teach so now, with coaching 6 month with coaching 6 month for one exam generally, for one exam generally absolutely yes so for the afp exam 6 months is the time duration that we set and that is more than enough to take up the exams pass and get a good score especially if you follow through with the process if you are you know in tune with the subjects that are being offered the materials that are being offered um now if you study on your own there is no reason to say that you can't do it you should absolutely if you feel that you can you should absolutely try it and if you do that 6 months may be adequate maybe you might need some additional time maybe a year but you still can do that if you put in your mind to it so there is no reason to say that you have to join a class it's a it personal subjective. choice it depends on it the student Ab- also absolutely 100% subjective depends on your capacity but the advantage that you have if you even if you know your subject the advantage that you have if you join a class is you just get targeted coaching you get targeted training 
you don't have to worry about everything that's out there and trying to sift the answers through that you know huge volume of study material you know what to look for from where and you know your concept so you can answer any question that comes around it so i've i've actually trained students who were really good in what they did they had what it took to take up the exams by themselves but they went for our coaching just because they wanted to get an additional edge and they scored in the high 90s with that so yeah, yeah they, here in here since you have mentioned the score i have two questions one is the what is the minimum score which one should uh, get to uh, uh, for example nbd there is no scoring it is pass or fail but they say it is more than 75 i'm i'm really not sure about inbd now but that is how nbd part 1 part 2 was there and the second question was if you fail once in one exam you have to wait for 3 month before again giving the attempt to the second again the same exam yep. do you have any similar situation in, in the canadian exams great question so let me take the first part the first part is what is the minimum that you have to score to actually pass in the exams so from what i you know what what's been there on the ndeb website the minimum hasn't changed it is a test equated score of 75 so that means you answer about uh, 300 questions in the exam and out of the 300 questions some questions might be taken out of consideration because they were wrong they had more than one option and then ndeb does a statistical analysis of each question they see how you performed in relation to everyone who took up the exam uh in relation to the previous trends so they plot you on a bell curve and on the bell curve you basically have one point that is the 75th percentile beyond which everyone is considered to be passed the other ones other people below that percentile are considered to have not cleared so they give you a test equated score of 75 as a minimum for passing so your raw marks out of 300 is calculated recalculated and statistically analyzed to give you a test equated score of 75 and based on that if you scored above 75 you will have passed if you score below 75 you will not have passed they do give you your ranking or they don't give you a ranking per se they give you do give you a score and they tell you whether you passed and failed so the more you score the higher you score the better your chances are at school but if you just want to get into direct licensing all you need to do is score 75 and above that's it you don't need to worry about the score as such your exam becomes more of a pass fail thing if you don't want to get into school and you want to go into direct licensing now as for the wait time there is no wait time if you haven't cleared your exams there is no wait time to retake the exam so i know people who apply for the exam and who for some unfortunate reason they didn't clear they could reapply to the next cycle so they took up the first exam in august they weren't successful there so they reapplied for the upcoming cycle to take up the exam in february and you can go so there is no cool down period or there is no waiting period for the exams as such and Hope is there answer. is there there is another one very important question Uh, sure. in for, in the us exam i hope i am recollecting it properly that if you fail three or four times then you can you may have to uh, you know wait longer period maybe one year initially it is three months for each attempt but after three to four attempts then you will be allowed to take the exam after one year do you have any rules such rules here like you have only maximum three attempts or four attempts 